fiat, I would best describe it as your local currency. So if you're in the United States, it's going to be the US dollar. If you're in Japan, like Sebastian, it's going to be the yen. Wherever you are, there's a local currency and that's considered fiat. So fiat is just that dollar value, whatever dollar you use in your particular country. And I would like to touch back on Rick's first point about this illusion of speed in the current monetary system with fiat, you know, with credit cards and checks. You're under the assumption that these things cash immediately. But at the at the end of the day, at the end of every banking day, banks actually close their accounts. They sweep their accounts and they're communicating with all the credit card companies and checking companies and they're balancing their ledger. And this happens on an everyday basis. So things take a lot longer to settle than 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 what you do. So things could take three to five days to settle, but based on uh, trust of certain transactions for a certain individual, things are going to speed up based on that. But ledgers have to be balanced on a either daily or weekly basis. Um, that being said, I would like to probably my answer of what's the what are the pros and cons between crypto and fiat i'd like to more take it as a comparison of what i think crypto is in comparison to fiat and i think that crypto's use case or crypto's utility in comparison to fiat really hasn't been determined yet um because the fiat the current fiat system of western nations is so smooth at the moment um, I'm not talking about countries that are experiencing hyperinflation, but if you live in a Western country, if you live in the States, you know, you're experiencing certain levels of inflation, of course, but at the end of the day, it's a lot easier to use cash or credit or, you know, use your checkbook than it is to use crypto at the moment. And the, the purpose of crypto was to move away from the current monetary system and have a more immutable ledger and a way to increase the speed of transactions i would argue that crypto hasn't necessarily done that yet um i hear when i first got into crypto it was this idea of escaping inflation and you know last time i checked if you check bitcoin they have i think up to a hundred forks as of the beginning of bitcoin's um in, as of bitcoin's inception so when i first got into crypto i was thinking what's the difference between forks and actual inflation in the monetary system um you know printing money out of thin air but bitcoin has tons of forks they have bitcoin cash they have bitcoin sv and bitcoin cash abc they have bitcoin god bitcoin private so it seems like forks are just printed constantly and i don't know if someone wants to correct me on whether or not that constitutes inflation but i think that it constitutes inflation. Another reason why crypto was invented was to take out this middleman. And this middleman in the current fiat system is your traditional bank or your traditional credit card or your traditional checking company. Whatever companies that you're using, you have to go through a middleman. And the issue with that is, you know, you go to your bank, whatever bank you have, they close. You know, you have to wait in line to get your money, but they have certain business hours. You can't go after that. Or if you want to go to an ATM and take out money, you have restrictions on that. You know, you can, depending on the bank, oh, you know, they tell you, oh, you can only take out $500 in a day. And what happens if you want to take $600? And it really takes away the power of the individual to access your money. And crypto is supposed to solve that. I don't think it's solving that now because at the end of the day, most people are still using middlemen in crypto. They still keep their crypto on exchanges, so they're still subject to... You know, whatever Binance and Bittrex, if they shut down, they have to wait to hold, get their money. So I don't think people have made that tradition yet, uh, transition yet. And I think that Cardano is looking to invent or looking to revolutionize crypto and give it an actual use case and give it actual advantages over the current monetary system or over current fiat. And I'm looking forward to this. And I think that's probably my short answer of what the pros and cons of crypto and fiat are more of a comparison but that's the way i rationalized it i think there's kind of two parts to the advantage the first one is trying to build a currency based on mathematics and what i mean by building a currency based on mathematics is that there's a, a, a set of rules that you can prove whether or not they're a fault right you can prove that you don't have money 
or you can prove that you have a certain amount of money or you can prove that you sent money to somebody else right and that's extremely hard with the current fiat systems right imagine you gave five dollars to bob and you want to prove to somebody you really sent five dollars to somebody right that's extremely difficult if it's uh you know in cash it's just not even possible the best thing you could have done is maybe take a pic took a picture of like the bill like the maybe took a picture of the five dollar bill and then bob takes a picture of the five dollar bill and you go like hey like the pictures match or like some weird thing the serial numbers match right it's not super trustworthy and it's not super easy to do right so if you don't have a bank account aka you don't have a trusted middleman you cannot even prove whether or not you sent money to somebody or not and you cannot prove the ownership of a certain amount of money really so that's kind of a complication right and okay so let's say you, you do have a bank account then you, you can send you know five dollars to somebody through your bank account and then you can maybe prove with like some bank statements that you really did send money, but then you have to like go to the bank, get the bank statements, you have to get them to sign it or whatever to prove to people that you didn't just like uh, print this out and just like uh, fake the data, right? So it's not an easy process to prove that even like the bank statements or whatever are, are, are actually accurate. And so we've built up an entire system that seems kind of crazy in a sense where we just kind of half trust people, right? So if somebody gives you $100 and says like, go buy something for an event, you go to the grocery store, you buy some stuff, and then you get a receipt, right? And you give them back the receipt and you're like, see, I spent your $100 to buy these things, right? But it's just like a piece of paper, right? There's no actual proof. You could have gone home, printed this on a piece of paper and then just give it to them. And in fact, a lot of companies will accept without a receipt, just like something written on paper. Right, you have like a paper list and you wrote down what you bought and how much it cost, and you're like, here's my receipt. And so this is not like a super trustable system, but it's what we have. And so people have just built societies on top of this and whatever. The advantage a crypto gets is that you can now have a ledger and you can generate a mathematical proof on the ledger that a transaction happened or a certain account owns a certain balance or a certain account does not own a certain balance. Right. And this is if you live in a transparent cryptocurrency, for example, Bitcoin or whatever, where we don't use any privacy features. Uh, but the ability to prove stuff about uh, financial transactions is extremely powerful. Uh, so you can think of, in a way, as the, the transitioning to this more mathematical based system as, as getting rid of the middleman. Right? Just like I say, if you just have cash, you cannot prove that you sent somebody or uh, sent money to somebody, right? you can get some amount of trust by going through a middleman, right? Because then the bank can, you know, claim something happened, and then if you trust the bank, then you're okay with it, right? Uh, but now you're replacing this middleman with just, you know, some system in the sky. The problem is somebody has to be the person that actually processes these transactions in the sky, right? There's, there's somebody at the end of the day that's pro processing your Bitcoin transaction or whatever, right? And so, and that's where we get into the decentralized nature of it, which is kind of the other advantage, which is nobody can really block your transaction, right? If you make a transaction on the Bitcoin network, there's a very high chance it gets through and nobody can block it. And so that has some good use cases. For example, if you're doing a kind of business that is completely legal, but you know, somebody disagrees with it, doesn't want to take the PR risk of being the middleman for you, uh, then the cryptocurrency kind of allows you to get past it. Uh, but just in general, you know, people have had problems with banking systems, right? You cannot possibly claim, oh yeah, the banking system works for everybody. There's, you know, a certain subset of the population where just, you know, if for some reasons things are not working. Sometimes the banks, you know, fail or do something questionable has what happened in the last crisis, right? So with all that that happened, we cannot possibly claim that this system has worked for 100% of the people. And so when that happens, you need an alternative system, right? And you say, okay, maybe the banking system failed for you for whatever, there's some edge case that you hit into and it didn't work. Now we have an alternative system with a different kind of middleman, which happens to be, you know, the crypto in the sky that's creating the blocks. And this middleman can 
allow you to prove that transaction happened or these other properties you would like to have. And I think that's an advantage. So that's kind of my 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 pitch to why I think uh, crypto cryptocurrencies have you know a reason to exist. All right, Sebastian. So what I want to do, since we're since we're beating up on the middleman and going back to the ledger, I want to continue with that. Um, another example of the middleman uh, and why, what the pros and cons of fiat. There's not, there are not a whole lot of cons to fiat. Fiat has a lot going for it. Um, but one of the biggest cons that I've seen is when you go to withdraw your money. If you go to an ATM, if I want to take out $20 or $40 or $100, uh, like Philippe mentioned, it's limited. You know, there might be some type of limit to how much you can take out. But at the same time, they're charging you a withdrawal fee of $2, $2.50, sometimes $3, depending on where you're at. You know, if you're at an airport, they'll, they'll get you real high. That's a first world problem, okay? That's not the problems that they're experiencing in other countries that don't have a banking system. But, you know, they're skimming that money off of you. <clears throat> Now, that's a little bit different than when you go to an exchange, uh, say Coinbase or Bittrex, and you go to exchange your money and you're changing dollars to crypto, they're charging you a fee for the risk that they accept. Uh, what they're doing with the ATMs, when you go to withdraw your crypto from the ATMs, they're charging you a fee for providing a service. Okay, so and those little fees add up, and we don't think about them. If you check your bank statement once in a while and you look at all those fees, they add up. So, uh, dealing with uh, fiat does have a lot of expenses to it. Uh, it. It adds up over time. It just kind of leeches your money off. And to follow up with also what Sebastian was saying on the ledger, uh, the ledger is one of the most fascinating things that I learned in crypto. Like I, I, I was involved with crypto for well over a year until I really understood what the block explorer was. And every crypto out there has a block explorer. So if you're new to crypto and you're watching this podcast, go check out the block explorers for all the different types of crypto and the ones that you're using because uh, there you can see the ledger, all the transactions and whatever the transaction uh, ID is and the address for your wallet and all those neat things. So that's pretty cool. That's an advantage of uh, cryptocurrencies.